Hello and welcome to our fourth service in this time of COVID-19. Last week I asked for contributions and I was so pleased to receive so many offers of prayers, song choices, reading, songs to be sung, Thank you so much. Don't stop now, as they say. I was offered a prayer from Sandy Cypress that comes from Leslie Freeman, that comes from her daughter Caroline, who sent it to her from her RAF base in Cyprus. A call to arms for all who serve. Let us pray. We are not a people of fear. We are a people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are not a people of greed. We are a people of generosity. We are your people, God giving and loving where we are, whatever it costs for or, or as long as it takes, wherever you call us, Lord. Amen. Linda Wilson's going to read to the, the Bible to us shortly of the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. At the end of that story, they finally realise who Jesus is and he by the breaking of bread. So I'm going to invite you again to, uh, during the next song, go and get a piece of bread or biscuit and a glass of something. We're not going to celebrate as we are a communion service as we know the sacrament is withdrawn however it was at that story it was at that point when Jesus broke bread that their eyes were opened so we're going to pray at that time that our eyes will open too in the meantime here's another song we learned at spring harvest at home this week it's the dinosaur song let's Take a trip back in time So many, many years ago Walking on the earth With supermassive animals With teeth and claws and fur and Some could swim and fly and crawl But way more radical Is that God who made them is alive God is bigger than a dinosaur Taller than a dinosaur Stronger than a dinosaur God is older than a dinosaur More mighty than a dinosaur More awesome than a dinosaur Tyrannosaurus Rex, king above the rest. And how did Stegosaurus bath or did Plodocus lay eggs? Only God could know it all, but way more radical is that he could bring them back to life. Now, wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't it? God is bigger than a dinosaur. Taller than a dinosaur 
sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. trouble anywhere we should never be discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows Today's reading is taken from Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. 
about Jesus of Nazareth? They replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women were amazed. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels, who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter this glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled, assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Pilgrim's Way stretches from England to Compostela in Spain, or from Rome to Canterbury, or from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Our life is one journey in itself, but there are shorter journeys through school or employment, and smaller journeys still. Some of us would be wanting to get back to normal and walk to the shops perhaps, small journeys. But even those small journeys can prove significant for the shape of our journey through life as a whole. And the journey of the two disciples to Emmaus in this morning's reading is an exquisite story. Journeys for Luke are an image of discipleship. His gospel is shot through with the language of journey and he continues that through into Acts of course with the travels of Paul and the others. And we can enter that imaginatively but it serves to illuminate the journey that we ourselves make. Journeys whether or not we call them pilgrimages open us up to new experience and meeting with new people who share our route, even down to the shops. And because there's no knowing, knowing in advance, what exactly will happen on such a journey? Most I expect will be uneventful, and we can't know when our journey starts, whether it's going to be a big journey or not. It may be unforgettable, and it may change our lives forever. No wonder the regular showing of people on TV from different walks of life makes such compelling times. The journey of the two disciples from Jerusalem is triggered by loss and by desolation. Their hopes and expectations have been dashed. Their world has caved in. And now they want only to turn their backs on Jerusalem and move hastily into a fresh environment. But loss is all-consuming. They're caught up in a frenetic discussion, and perhaps typically of newly bereaved people. They need to go over and over the details in microscopic detail, hoping to find some sense in the tragedy that has overtaken them. <laughs> and then, a stranger crosses their path, a pilgrim, presumed to be returning from the same festival, but a stranger nevertheless. The stranger is a disquieting figure in the modern world. He or she keeps us in suspense. It's a strange irony that Luke casts Jesus as a stranger. We sing what a friend we have in Jesus, and yet here Luke makes Jesus the stranger. But so he remains to this day, to most of our friends and acquaintances, our colleagues, those we pass in the street. And they and we miss Jesus if we misread the gospel. And if our conceptual framework is too rigid to countenance a God who is incognito and is met as a stranger. Never talk to strangers, stranger danger. But we're reminded that some strangers can be angels unawares. And the sense of loss is the one condition when even the most private of people are ready to open up to strangers, as do the erstwhile disciples of Jesus, of course. The stranger listens and then asks the most naive question. In the Reader magazine over the last couple of quarters, there's been great debate as to whether Jesus uses humour in his, in, in his ministry, whether there's actually humour in the Bible, and yet here we are. He sustains the cheeky suggestion that he, Jesus above all people, is out of touch with news that concerns his own misfortune. In playing along with them, Jesus always draws people out of themselves. And he draws out of those two bewildered, disillusioned disciples all their pent-up feelings. That's what friends are for. But sometimes, as in this case perhaps, strangers with their critical distance 
can give us a clearer perspective. But faith isn't recycling our feelings or securing clarification by a stranger. There has to be something outside ourselves to enlarge our scope. And that's the purpose of scripture. Jesus explains it. He's the critical interpreter who teaches his people how to read the scriptures. Understanding the scriptures is critical to recognising who Jesus is. And the journey could end there. Perhaps it often does. We learn a bit more of the Bible to store away. And that's as far as it goes. And the stranger makes as if to go on. He won't make them feel they have to invite him in. After all, it's late and they weren't prepared for visitors. But the disciples prevail upon the stranger to stay with them. If they hadn't, he would have passed on and the opportunity would have been lost. No wonder hospitality then is a great theme of the Christian faith. And Luke draws this into his gospel often. We think of Mary and Martha perhaps here. So in the reading this morning they sit for supper. It's not a special festival meal like Passover. But no meal in that world is ordinary. There's a great respect for bread. The stranger takes it, blesses it and breaks it. That's exactly what he's done with his own life. Then we're told only when he took the bread where their lives eyes opened and they recognized him. He broke bread and then they recognized him. Their eyes were opened. That's God opening their eyes, enabling them to see. And what they saw was not merely that the stranger was really Jesus, but much more important that Jesus the stranger was the crucified and glorified Messiah. A discovery then which was too rich to be lived at the time it occurred. A journey to shape all journeys and one to blaze the trail on the journey of life itself. Their journey from disbelief to faith involves a journey back to Jerusalem and a journey into mission and worship. And when they get back to the rest of the disciples, guess what? They too find that they have heard that Jesus is alive and has appeared to Simon Peter. So whatever the journey, whoever the stranger, the travellers, however preoccupied, there is always the possibility that a stranger will emerge from the shadows, cross their path, and show himself as the Lord of life. I'd like to start our prayers this morning with a prayer that our lovely Leslie sent me at Easter. Her daughter Caroline is in the RAF and stationed in Cyprus. She sent this prayer to Leslie to share at this uncertain time. <clears throat> we are not a people of fear. We are a people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not a people of greed. We are a people of generosity. We are your people. God giving and loving. Wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Amen. <clears throat> Faithful God, thank you for each morning we have woken up to the joy of warm sunshine and birdsong and beauty, beauty that lifts our spirits. Lord, we pray that this enforced quiet time that gives us a new appreciation of your glorious creation will continue to shape our lifestyle and the business and government policy decisions in the future, once this pandemic is finally under control. And Lord, we remember those who wake each morning with a heavy heart, those who find solitude a difficult and depressing burden to bear. Lord, may they feel your presence and rest in your perfect peace 
and in doing so, allay their fears and loneliness. Lord, give us patience and perseverance as we battle through this together. Thank you for our friends and families, and we entrust them to your loving care. Lord, we are called to be a people of hope, and so, Lord, we pray for all those working to find a safe, effective vaccine. We pray for safety for the selfless NHS staff and all the carers who work tirelessly to give care and comfort to those suffering from this prolific virus. Lord, we are so blessed with the excellent care and facilities that we have, but there are so many places in the world where even the basics, like clean water and the possibility of social distancing and isolation are totally unachievable and where the impact of the virus will be devastating. And so, in hope, we cry out to you on their behalf for their safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we watch the news on TV or read the newspapers, it would be easy to think that all other tragedies had come to a stop. COVID-19 fills the airways in every conceivable way. But you, Lord, see everything and know the suffering that at present is hidden from our view. Lord, we pray for everyone affected by the recent massacre in Mozambique and for Yemen, already suffering from food shortages because of war, now in danger of being overwhelmed by COVID-19. <clears throat> and we pray for situations that are less violent, but worrying nonetheless, <clears throat> because still their attentions with political shenanigans as some world leaders take advantage of how this pandemic has paralyzed the normal government. We pray for the safety of our compassion children and their families, and for Rachel, still waiting to come home from Pakistan. May all who are afraid take comfort from your word to Isaiah in chapter 41, verse 13. I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are called to be faithful people. So, Lord, in our daily prayers, encourage us to remember to pray for all those who, in this difficult time, are tuning in to church services for the first time. They're tuning in to hear your message of love and hope. We pray that this uncertain time, that in this uncertain time, that message will bring reassurance, restoration, and revival. Loving Lord, we pray for all whose health is causing them problems. It's so easy to concentrate only on this virus, but there are so many with other health needs whose concerns and recovery have been put on hold. You know them by heart, Lord, and we lift them to you. And Lord, we give thanks for where follow-up appointments have brought good news. And Lord, as we share in that rejoicing, we also share in the sadness of those who are mourning the loss of a dearly loved one. Lord, we pray that your love will fill the emptiness, that you will spread your wings of mercy over all who are mourning, and that you will lift their head to see a brighter day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, Lord, we, your people, bring these prayers to a close. Lord of all hopefulness, Almighty and everlasting God, the only worker of great marvels, send down upon our bishops and other pastors and all congregations committed to their care the spirit of your saving grace, and that they and we may truly please you. Pour upon them and us the continual dew of your blessing. 
Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our Advocate and Mediator, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In Christmas 2018, we had the local premiere of Sally Crickens' Lullaby to Jesus. I'm really pleased to say that Keith and Sally have recorded it for this service this morning. So we're now going to hear Sally and Keith Crickens singing Lullaby to Jesus. <laughs> my guiding light Jesus I feel no shame when you are in my heart Jesus you're there for me you light my darkest hour Jesus you guide me home by your grace and power your strength is all I need your grace is all I seek. Your spirit fills up my cup. Your strength is all I need. Your grace is all I seek. Your spirit fills up my cup. Jesus, you conquered all. Jesus, dear friend of mine, you lift me when I fall. Jesus, you take my pain and wash my sins away. Jesus, you've made my life complete in every way. Your strength is all is all I seek. Your spirit fills up my cup. Your strength is all I need. Your grace is all I seek. Your spirit fills up my cup. Jesus, I love your name. Jesus, my guiding light. Jesus, I feel no shame when you are in my heart. Jesus, no words can say how much you mean to me. Jesus, I'll follow you to where I'm meant to be. Your strength is all I need. Your grace is all I seek. Your spirit fills up my cup. Your strength is all I need. Your grace is all I seek. Your spirit fills up my cup. When he was at the table with them, he took bread. Gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. So I invite you to share and break bread with whoever's with you. If it's just us on the screen, then do so now.
Thank you to all those that have made this service possible today. Thank you to Linda for reading, to Sandy for leading prayers, and to Sally and Keith for providing the song. Final prayer from Fire of the North, the Life of St Cuthbert. You are the maker of earth and sky. You are the maker of birds that fly. You are the maker of the oceans deep. You are the maker of moorland sheep. You are the maker of stars up above. You are the maker, the giver of love. You are the maker of such as me. Keep us all, O Lord, eternally. So go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. We want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see, we wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. Step by step, we're moving forward, little by little, taking ground. Every prayer of powerful weapon, strongholds come tumbling down. We wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see, we wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high. We're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted. We wanna see. We wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see, we wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high.